Hi, I'm Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm an Old Norse specialist currently teaching at the University of California, Berkeley, and as of fall 2017, moving to the University of Colorado Boulder. I'm back today with another video about a topic in Norse language and myth, and today I'd like to talk about the names of characters in that Viking show. The Viking show is sort of inescapable for someone in my position who makes a living teaching things like Norse language, Norse myth, and Vikings, and it is based on the legends of the Danish Viking Ragnar and his sons. These stories are preserved in many different medieval sources, all of which tell uh, widely varying accounts about him and his sons. Some of them are in the Old Norse language, such as the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, Ragnar Saga Lothbrokar, which will appear in a new translation by me in September, or Thothar of Ragnar Sonum, the short story of Ragnar's sons, and other sources are in the Latin language, such as the Gesta Danorum, or History of the Danes, by the historian Saxo Grammaticus. Because these sources come are in both Old Norse language and Latin language, we have names for many of the characters in Old Norse and in Latin. And one of the curious things about the show from my perspective is that it mixes Old Norse and Latin names. So whereas Ragnar, for instance, is his Old Norse name, and Latin sources such as Saxo, his name is given as something like Ragnaros. So it's a little bit strange to see his name given in Old Norse, but then, for instance, Lagatha given in Latin rather than the Old Norse form, Hlathgerber. Another thing that's a little bit curious about the show is the way that it treats some nicknames as last names. So Lothbrok, for instance, is just a nickname of Ragnar. His last name, such as it is, is Sigurdarsson, because his father's name is Sigurdr. In Old Norse, last names are simply your father's name plus son or daughter. But many people have a nickname based on their personal appearance or behavior, or some kind of garment that they were noted for wearing. And in Ragnar's case, it's no different. He's known as Lothbrok, which means shaggy pants, because he wore a distinctive pair of shaggy pants or shaggy shaps when he fought a dragon early on in his life. Note that Old Norse uses this letter ev, which looks like a curly medieval D with a slash through it, to mean the sound of TH in English, weather. So this is pronounced in Old Norse as Lothbrok. Because this letter looks like a D and is based on a D originally, many translators print it as a D, but other translators will print it as TH because that's closer to the English pronunciation. That's why you'll see both Lodbrok and Lothbrok. I'll point out also that you'll sometimes see his first name written in Old Norse with one R or with two. You'll also often see this R that I've written on the end of other names removed. The reason for that is that Old Norse is a case-based language where names and other nouns have different endings depending on their function in the sentence. The root of the name is simply Ragnar without the extra R, but the second R is the form of his name that's used when he is the subject of a sentence. And that's usually how we write names out in reference materials for the Old Norse language, and that's why I've written the extra R uh, on names where it's applicable on this board. Note also that the pronunciations of names that I'm using in this video are the Old Norse reconstructed medieval pronunciations, not the modern Icelandic pronunciations, even though modern Icelandic pronunciations are perhaps better known today. I teach both Old Norse and modern Icelandic, so I have some videos about pronunciation of both that I'll link in a card in the top right corner. Now to look at some of these names, as I mentioned, Ragnar, his last name would be Sigurdarsson. His nickname is Lothbrok, Shaggy Pants. The meaning of his given name, Ragnar, is something like divine warrior. Old Norse has many words for god. Ragan is one of them. It also shows up in Ragnarok, the end of the gods. And Ar is a worn down form of an earlier word for either man or warrior. So something like divine warrior is a pretty good translation of the name. One of his wives is Lagertha, but this, as I mentioned before, is a Latinized version of her Old Norse name, which is Hladgerder. Curiously, the name Lagertha comes from the Latin language source of Saxo, who does not mention Oslaug, but the Old Norse sources that mention his wife Oslaug don't mention Hlothgerder. Another name that comes up in the show quite a bit is Rollo, and this is another Latinized name. The Old Norse name is Hrolver, which you sometimes also see in its more archaic form, Hrolder. This means in origin, fame wolf, which is pretty cool when you consider that this is the origin of the less imposing sounding English name. Ralph. Ragnar's most important wife, according to the Old Norse version of his story, is Oslaug. 
Her name contains another word for God, which is also seen in Oskar, through the home of the gods. Her name is literally something like God Bath. Old Norse names are supposed to sound cool. They don't necessarily have to make a complete sentence or thought or even something that makes sense. So God Bath, if you will, Oslaug. When he first meets her, he thinks her name is Kroka, which means crow, but he later finds out that her true name is Oslaug and that she is the daughter of the famous dragon slayer Sigurdr and the Valkyrie Brynhildr. She also later takes yet another name. She changes her name to Randalin when she becomes a warrior herself and goes with her sons to fight the Swedes. Three of their most famous children include Bjorn Ironside. This is a nickname again, Jornsida. His last name in an Old Norse context would be Ragnarsson, as would his brothers, Ivar Ragnarsson, Sigurd the Ragnarsson. So Jornsida means Ironside. There's also Ivar the Boneless, Ivar in Bainlausi. The N isn't necessary in Old Norse, you don't always see it. And then there's Sigurd the Ormer i Euga, Sigurd the Snake in the Eye, or Snake Eye. These two have pretty colorful origin stories for their names. According to the Norse saga, Ivar the Boneless is called so because he literally doesn't have bones. He has only cartilage where his bone should be. And Sigurd Snake Eye, according to the Norse saga, he has the snake in his eye because his father Ragnar is a dragon slayer and his maternal grandfather Sigurd was also a dragon slayer. And he's the first child born after Ragnar knows also it's true parentage. In Saxo's Latin language version, Sigurdr has the snake eye because of a healing powder that the god Odin sprinkles into his eyes. In connection with the god Odin, Odin appears under the name Horbarder, Greybeard, in one of the poems of the Poetic Edda, which is the main source of the myths of the Norse gods, which is available in a translation by me in contemporary English. And he also appears again as a fairy man in the saga of the Volsung uh, clan of heroes when he takes away the body of the hero Sinfjotli. And it is this Odin name that is rendered in the Vikings TV show as Harbard. Well, I hope this has been somewhat interesting and informative for you. And for now, I'm wishing you all the best.